This is Jeremy from the Artifacts Forge with another useful Affinity Designer tutorial. In this video, I'm going to explain how to use the Resource Manager to manage images used in an Affinity Designer document. I'll cover how to link, embed, update and replace images and more. First, I'll create a new document to place an image in. Most of the document settings are arbitrary in this demo, but I wanted to draw your attention to the image placement settings here. When you hit the drop down arrow, you can choose if any images you place in the document will be embedded or linked. A linked image links to the original external file. So when you edit the original image file, it can be updated in Affinity Designer. I'll show you an example later in this video. When an image is embedded, the link to the original file is broken and the placed image will be saved as part of the Affinity Designer file. Files with embedded images are larger than those with linked images. I'm going to choose Prefer Linked. You can switch to Embedded if you change your mind and I'll show you that later. To place an image, head to the File and then Place Menus. Navigate to where your image is saved and double click it. Click where you'd like the image, then resize and reposition it as required. I'm using a vintage embossed paper texture from the Artifacts Forge's Vintage Paper Ephemera Archive, a massive collection of genuine antique paper textures featuring parchments, papers, tickets, labels, tags, bills, letters, and much, much more. Follow the link in the description below to get a free sample and to find out more. Now the image is in the document, I'm going to show you how to manage a placed image using Affinity Designer's Resource Manager. To open the Resource Manager, go to the Window menu then select Resource Manager. As you can see, the placed image is shown in the thumbnail here. If the document contained more images, you would see all of them in the same box. To the right of the thumbnail is information relating to the image. The type column shows the file format. Then there's Place DPI. This is not the original DPI of the image, but the DPI in relation to the scaling of the placed image. So, because I made the image smaller after placing it, the DPI increased. If I were to upscale the image, the DPI would get smaller and vice versa. This is worth keeping an eye on if you're upscaling images. The original DPI can be seen here. Then you have the file size, the placement, this is if the image is embedded or linked, which artboard the image is on, and the status. As you can see, the status says OK. If the image has been moved from its original file location, the status will state missing. And if the image has been modified outside of Affinity Designer, it will say modified. I'll revisit this later in the video. If I select the image thumbnail within the resource manager, extra image details are displayed here. As already mentioned, there's the original image DPI. You also have the placed size, which is the size of the image when placed in your document, the placed DPI again, the color profile used and the image color mode. The information here is the image's file location on your computer. Next, I'll explain what these buttons do. The first button is locate in document. When clicked, the relevant image will be selected within the document. If the image is out of view, pressing the button will bring it into view. This can be really useful when locating images in busy documents with loads of elements. You'll notice the update button is greyed out and this is because the image hasn't been altered outside Affinity Designer. So to demonstrate this button, I'm going to switch to Affinity Photo where I've already added some text to the image but I haven't saved it yet. I'm now going to save the image and switch back to Affinity Designer. Watch the update button. It's no longer greyed out as it's registered that the image has been altered. The status has also been updated to modified here. When I click the update button, the image updates and the changes are visible in Affinity Designer. The next button is replace. Use this to replace your image with another. Simply click it and navigate to the image of your choice. We previously mentioned embedding files. The embed button converts a linked image to an embedded one. As you can see here, the image is currently linked. 
When you press the embed button, the link to the external image is cut and the image is now saved as part of the Affinity Designer file. As mentioned earlier, this increases the size of your Affinity file. To revert to a linked file, click the button again. When the collect button is clicked, Affinity will package all of the images used in your document into a folder. This is useful when organizing files to send to clients or printers. After pressing the button, you'll be prompted to select where you'd like to save your image files. As you can see, the file is now in your chosen folder. This is a duplicate of the original image. You will now have two copies. The final button is Show in Explorer. If you're on a Mac, this button will read Show in Finder. Clicking it brings up the file folder location. This is useful if you want to access the file and edit it in a hurry. I hope this video was useful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Be sure to follow our channel and watch our other Affinity Designer videos for more handy tips and tricks. And don't forget to follow the link below to check out Artifacts Forge's Vintage Paper Ephemera Archive and our other useful Affinity brushes, textures and toolkits. Thanks for your support.